So Shram, go ahead and introduce yourself now that I came in like hella wheels and totally took over the joint. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, if you don't know me, my name is Shram Zarshanis. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Financial Sense and really excited to do this webinar with you guys today and with Kelly. I think, you know, Kelly uses our platform. She's got a lot of really great tips of how she's been able to optimize her workflows and even get if whether you're looking for something to, you know, optimize your workflows, streamline your processes and just create a more productive firm. Or if you're a current user and you're looking for better ways or um, better ways or best practices for using our solution, this is going to be a great webinar for both sides. So I'm excited. Uh, yeah, me too. Um, and so here we are. Um, I'm Kelly Parks. I am a uh, longtime cloud bookkeeper up here in Canada. So I've been using cloud technology, QuickBooks Online. And in the beginning, I was using Xero as well. I micro my business. So although I love Xero, I can only use one GL because I need to hone my workflows uh, to soup one, but don't get me wrong. I love zero. I love Sage Cloud. I love them all. I love the desktop GLs. I think all of the accounting platforms have done amazing things for uh, small businesses, but um, I, I went cloud. Um, I actually went remote uh, in 2009 in that I was hosting desktop applications on, um, at that point I was hosting it on Dropbox and uh, which, was the only thing I could really do then. Turns out it it actually will um, kill your payroll. So I did hear it would corrupt payroll and I like, and then one day it corrupted payroll. Anyways, it freed my clients and I up immensely. Before we were using anything like HubDoc or Dext, we were also using Dropbox to share documents. And then I was using Splash Tops and Team, team Viewer to print checks off and all that kind of fun stuff. So it's been a good long ride. And um, in the beginning, of course, the, the, the programs weren't great, the cloud ones, but they've certainly come a long way. And now we have all the outside applications, which have changed my clients' lives all over again. Um, the document processing, the payment processors, all of it is simply magic. And then along came some of these practice management apps for us as well, which has been great got everything out of spreadsheets. I've been through a few practice management apps and a couple of years ago now, Shrum, how long? I guess I should know this. Like two years, I think you've been with us. I think, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, test driven a lot. And Shrum, you would agree. There is a crap ton of great practice management apps oh. out there for us. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you need to find the one that works for you. You need to find the one that thinks the way you think. It's not always just about the features, which we're going to talk about today. Very often, it is also about how you interact with it, um, how you feel when you're in it, how it looks visually for you. And then I do a thorough app vetting. Sharam, you've done my intake form. It's pretty thorough, right? Mm hmm Yes. So I, I, yeah, I do an intake form and it asks all kinds of questions about the app related to security house, what the logout time is, what the two factor authorization looks like. Then we talk about, I do a bit, a minor. I mean, I don't go look at their financials. We have, uh, we have a chat about whether the app is going to be around for a while, because that should be a big question. Um, so whether the app is going to be around, I do some stuff around what their funding looks like, where it's coming from, um, what their targets are, three to five years, all kinds of things. It's kind of a fun form, right, Trump? Yeah, it's a long one. <laughs> it's a long one. Yeah. And so um, I was evaluating financial sense and I also do a demo during that. And then I get a sandbox account to play in. And pretty much the minute I saw financial sense, I said, this is actually the one for me. And then I had Marissa, who uh, works with me, played around in financial sense. We were test driving a few for our own business. And she said, this is the one for us. And so I'm sorry she's not going to be here today because she's done some great work in our financial sense account as well. And I'm going to talk about the one thing she did the other day that was super cool. So um, anyways, here we are. Sharam, any other sort of intro things that we wanna we wanna talk about? 
No, I don't think I... so. Yeah, let's okay. get started. I'm sure people will have questions and we can go deeper. If, if anyone has any questions, they can drop them in the chat. But I think we're ready to get started. Great. So the only thing I want to do is I meant to have a, a, a workflow thing open for me. So we're going to jump around just a, a, for a minute here because I one of the things that I'm going to show is this super ridiculously magic way. And I mentioned this in some of my social posts super magically ridiculous way to get your um, processes uh, into financial sense, even if you haven't built them in there. So um, I'm just opening up a file and then we are underway. Okay, so let's rock our processes, resources and automation. So this is the consolidate and you will get a copy of this slide deck as well. So, so this is the um, actually, Sharon, do you want to PDF it maybe and put it into the into the chat? Which yeah, which slide deck is this? The, I don't have it. Actually, that was a swing and a miss on my part. I'll PDF the before we go. I will do a PDF yeah. of it. Okay, so let's rock your processes. And then these are the power tools. So this slide deck has an actual list of what I consider to be the power tools that are fairly new in the product. So those of you that have been using the product know about the things like the email integration and the checklists, and that in the checklist, there are places for time tracking and time management, um, that there are places to put in descriptions. When you are right in the project, there is um, a place to put in client tasks, but I want to talk about what's changed in client tasks a little. That's really changed 2023, the start of it for us. Um, what are some of the other standard features that we've had around for a while, Sharam? Task with subtasks. Tasks with subtasks, descriptions, um, linking in those descriptions, but now you can link in the resources. So we were uh, Don't that. get ahead of me. Come on. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, the client profile where you can organize your client's information. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that's it, right? If we're not going to talk about the new things. We are going to talk about the new things. Not yet, I guess. Um, okay, so uh, what I'm doing is I'm actually making a PDF of this deck, and I'm normally more prepared than this, but um, of course, the day that I have a presentation that I'm super excited about is the very same day that uh, we had what do you call it? Internet trouble. And hotspotting my phone was not working out. So um, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the magic of instant task lists. And Sharon and I talked about this and Sharon's kind of nonchalant. I found by accident. I did not realize that it had even been released yet. I was mucking about in a list and I thought I was going to add something in and it might make this weird thing all in one task. And then all of a sudden the magic happened that I could instantly import a task list. And so right away I slacked Shram and Shram's like, oh yeah, cool. Uh, and I'm like, no, no, not cool. Super game changing. Um, so I'm going to show actually how to use that. If we get through nothing else today, that is going to be the super fun part. I just put in the PDF of the slide deck. Don't get ahead of me though. No ruining surprises. Um, the project resources has been a game changer for us. So in the project panel now, there is an area where you can put in resources. Tag and st status automators. Um, I didn't realize how much I love this. Uh, Sharon put, I didn't even put it into our list. And then Sharon put it into the list of things to talk about. And the very next day, there was some magic tag status automators going on. And I went, right, why didn't I put that one in? Because Sharam, you were pretty excited about that one. Yeah, it's been a big one. I think one thing we're trying to do a lot of right now is reduce admin time or uh, the admin work so that you have to do. And these little things add up. And we want to, it, it's a really good one that a lot of people really like. Um, Kelly, I, are you are you sharing your screen yet? I don't think it's showing for people. Right, that I shared my screen. But now, can we see my screen? Yep, we can see it now. Perfect. Uh, does everybody want to see the title page there? Because I did a title page. <laughs> okay, so, uh, instant task list, project resources, tag and status automators. And when you talk about reducing the admin time, 
Um, I, so I've had Marissa for a couple of years, mostly she was doing payroll and then she was working for some other accounting firms. She's back and she is doing my client bookkeeping work. And I miss her desperately this week because she's away on holidays. She's in Jamaica and I'm here in Canada. And um, when you talk about re reducing admin times, now that she's been back with me for three months doing the client work, I've got her on a percentage of revenue as opposed to paying her hourly. Mm -hmm. So she is really looking for ways to reduce her admin work too. Talk about motivating, right? Uh, dependencies. Dependencies is not new. But I don't think people realize how important dependencies is. Don't be dragged out of order on doing things, especially when it comes to onboarding. So we're going to take a quick look at that. Um, custom upload buttons and texts. We're not going to dig deep into that because there are two other videos out there about it, about this, but this changed my game immensely. Sharam, I wanted this so badly. And then you listened to me and there it was. <laughs> It is all about Kelly. I have a, I have, I, I, I will say the features are all about Kelly. <laughs> so um, I love that once you click through the tasks, you can close the whole project. I, I don't need to then go do another click and close the project. But in addition to that, I also don't have to tick through the tasks one at a time. Now it is my policy to tick through the tasks as you do it. But when I've done a manager review, let's say, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm doing it all at once. I'm going to tick it off all at once. It's not something I'm coming back to mm -hmm. because it's a one and done project. I love to click all of the tasks at once and then it closes the project for me. Super cool. Um, the new things that are going on in the client profile for organization. What are, what are we calling that area again? I called it client card. You had a better word. The client database. Client database. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, duplicate folder structure is brand new. Custom fields are not brand new, but our view of custom view custom fields is amazing now. And searchable notes. I'm going to talk about searchable notes. I love the killer new view so that I can see all of my client details at once. I want to talk about not a new feature, but please how to manage your notifications so you don't have email or notification overwhelm. Another thing that I love is liking comments. I know that that may sound silly, but a lot of us think in emojis right now. So if something has been done, I don't need to peck out an entire reply. We can actually just like the comments. What was great. Okay, let's get going here. This is the thing that I want to show you. You can create a task list in seconds. You can add a list from a doc or a spreadsheet. You simply copy the list, and I'm going to demo this. You simply copy the list out of somewhere. You open the project or start, a temp start to build a template. You start the task. You paste the task list in the screen, and the entire list populates as separate tasks. You can do the exact same thing for subtasks. And here's why I discovered it. I have a remediation file going on right now. And I have I built it in a spreadsheet because sometimes it gets very complicated to build a list within an application. Sharam, we've done a few things where we've built a list in the spreadsheet. But now, mm -hmm. because it's easy to think in a spreadsheet, you can do things in bulk, you can move things around, you can really, we think in spreadsheets. Sometimes I just don't want to get lost in the nuances of the app application itself. I just want to peck out the work. And one of the hardest bits of work to do are remediation files. So I'm going to show uh, a remediation file. It's a, it's a template that I'm working on. Sharam, can you see the template now? I can. Mm -hmm. You're good. Okay. It's a template that I've been working on for a couple of years because templates are the hardest. I mean, um, remediation files, files are the hardest thing to do workflows through. So what I did was I've been packing this out as I go, and I've got some sub, um, sub sheets going on and then some final work on it. But I've got this overall task list that then leads to the other sheets. And I said to myself, can I put that in financial sense? 
So whenever I'm creating a list that's going to go into an application, I strip out all of the other notes that I don't need yet and take it down to the bare bones of a task. So then I took this list and I said, can I put this in? So I'm going to do a copy of it. And then I am going to come into my financial sense workflow. Okay. So we are in here and I, I, I have a project started and I want to put in that list so that you can see what I'm doing. Is that not the most magic thing? Oh, come on, sing. So there we go. Okay, so now here's what else is super fun. We are now in the list and we need the subtask. So this is, uh, sorry, I've got a few screens open, but it's it's worth going through the pain of me doing this. Oh, that's because I'm in the wrong place. Okay, so now I need these. I'm gonna come back into here. This is my sub list now. So that is in the, and have patience with me while I try to demo this, it's never pretty. Checklist of what you need versus what they have provided. Mm -hmm. Okay. Beep. <laughs> right? So, yeah. This is useful for so many reasons, right? It is useful if you are rethinking a workflow, even if you're already in financial sense. It is worth it if you have a new project that you are putting into financial sense. It is super worth it if you are transitioning from another application or from just using spreadsheets. So I think if we get through nothing else today, I would like love to hear from everybody that you guys like that as much as I do. And Sharon was casual about it. He says, yeah, this is going to be a really good feature. And I'm like, no, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> so um, that's the fun on that. Uh, I am going to carry on. Um, that's a cool okay. people are loving it in the chat. I know, right? Uh, this, this is huge. This is- I, I had no idea. My, <laughs> yeah, I know. This is my favorite new feature in here. Okay, so uh, you now have a, an idea how to do it. Yep, existing lists, right? So this will help mightily with migrations. Uh, or if you want to noodle ideas in a, in a spreadsheet, just like I've been doing with the file remediation, hardest workflow to build, right? Or if you want to noodle ideas in a spreadsheet and then add it to financial sense. Okay. Project resources. So let's take a little, a little bit uh, of a look at the project resources. So I am now in here, and this is this was great. Um, as I said, and it was more than three months ago. I think I brought. I think Marissa came back to me in July, and um, I had videoed all of my work. So all of my client work, how to run payroll, how to do weekly roll throughs, everything I had already done the videos and the videos were in a pretty good spot. So they could have been in here. You could put a link because there are live links. There's what do you call that WYSIWYG or something in here. You can do all kinds of things in here, but that's not really where I wanted them. And so now you can have links that lead directly to um, either spreadsheets that you need. I'm using this for one of my clients that has hourly employees payroll. And in the hourly employees payroll, we need to check off who actually submitted their time and who we still need to get time from. So that would be an example, the G drive folder for clients, either theirs, I have clients create folders, they share them with me. So I need direct links to them. Um, client meeting videos. So you can have them go directly to whatever it is uh, you need them to do. It can go to any, anything that you are hosting somewhere, you can put these in. And let's just add a resource for fun. Um, so you simply add the name and you put in the URL and you are good to go. So I am absolutely loving that feature right now. Um, okay, so Lisa's got prefer the tags for project status which is okay. So yeah, you're getting ahead of me on the tag automators. Okay. So Sharam, do you want to speak to the tag automators and that that is fun for changing a status? Yeah. So what the tag automators will do is 
when you complete a milestone or really a task in financial sense, it automatically will remove and add new tags. Um, so your team won't have to manually remove and add ta tags every time, or you won't have to depend on your team to remember to do it. It'll happen automatically, saving you time and keeping definitely everything in the right status so you have better visibility, which I love. And I know a lot of other people that are using it love it. This, this is the one that I really wish Marissa was here because this was her magic. So when I was in the in the in financial sense and I noticed how well everything was now tagged and she was smart enough after the one when we're clearing decks into QuickBooks Online, she put in the obvious one waiting on client. It would be a rare occasion that we were not waiting on the client at that point. So that's a good example of one that you really don't need to put in. We don't need it for some clients that we have a couple that are amazing. But for the most part, automating that tag for waiting on clients was amazing. So when I saw that in the file, I was super impressed. Um, when you get this slide deck, there is a link directly to this, the tag automators. Um, dependencies. So I really, really want to talk about dependencies. So one of the uh, areas where it would be great for is that you can't reconcile until the bank feeds are cleared. So you can't actually complete the task of reconciling until you have completed the task of clearing the bank feeds, for example. It, it, it makes you think and go back and it creates efficiency in your workflow and in your work because you don't start doing something that you can't finish properly. You can go ahead and open up a reconciliation. Financial Sense isn't going to go running into QuickBooks Online and like stop you from reconciling. But when you go to do that task in Financial Sense, it stops you and makes you think that you need to complete some other tasks before you get on with this one. And the other reason that that's really great is if a task, the next task is dependent on someone ahead of you doing their work, or if this task, the task you're about to do is dependent on someone else doing the work, you it stops you and it makes that change that efficient. I don't think I said that as well as it actually works. Shram, do you have a better way of saying that? Um, people basically can't complete the next task until you do your task. So it prevents mm. people from getting ahead of you and doing work before they're supposed to, if that's part of your process. Um, is, does that better explain it? Way better. The area uh, this would be best on, I mean, there's all kinds of reasons that it would be great. But in the onboarding process, one of the things that I see quite often is people getting lost in where they're at on onboarding because they will allow themselves to be pushed into a stage, I call them milestones, that they should not be pushed into. So for example, you cannot, I, I don't do my final engagement until they have completed the payment process with me. So I've done the quoting, I've done the reviewing, I've done the discovery, I've done all of that. And then um, I set up pre-authorized payments. Mm -hmm. If they don't complete that, then I don't move any more forward. I don't collect data from them. I don't do anything. That, that process stops right there. I see lots of people in the onboarding process. They'll, they'll skip to the end. They'll think that they can start working with the client. And then they get frustrated. And the client gets frustrated because the client hasn't given them all the information they need to actually start working. So that's where dependencies really come into play. And I'll do a, just a quick show and tell of what dependencies look like and how easy they are. So you need to set up your process first. You need to get all the tasks in there and then you can come in and then you can set up the dependency. So you can create the, but see how you have to have the, the task created first. So let's get the retainer before we do anything else. And then we're gonna close that out. Now I want to add rewind to the QBO file. Did I do something wrong? You might have done it in the wrong. We probably did it. Is this the one that I did it in? Yep. 
So uh, I can't do the checklist. Help me out here. What did I do? Um, oh, you, I want to do this one, right? Oh, it's not live yet, I think is what it is. We're on. This, okay, Go. so this is, what, this is what happens when I don't video something and I actually try to do a live demo. So let me just do a refresh and see if that changes it for me. And let's make sure it doesn't bring me into all the clients. Um, so when I go to add, okay, I have done something wrong. So it, it looks like you're wanting to make, what are you wanting to make dependent on what? Oh, you're right. I did not make it dependent on the right thing. I made it dependent on get retainer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there is a video on dependencies on the financial sense website that's going to do a way better job than me and luckily I don't have that much dignity so I'm fine that I screwed that up somehow and I'm just happy to move along. Um, well, okay. One thing I, I do want to add about dependencies is we've made a change recently. I, I think I told you about this Kelly I might not have but there was two reasons for dependencies the old way of dependencies one it was to prevent you for someone from doing the next task before you finish it because you have to be done. And the second was, was to notify the next person when it's done. So when there's a change in hands, it would say like, let's say I'm doing a task and Kelly has to review my work. Afterwards, it will notify Kelly and say, hey, Strom completed this task. You can now begin reviewing the work or any other. It doesn't have to be review. Well, we recently made an update to where you don't need dependencies for that notification anymore. It happens automatically. So if there's ever like in a project where it's like, maybe I'm assigned the first four tasks and Kelly's assigned the next three. When I finish my four, Kelly will automatically get notified that I finished my tasks and she can begin her work, even if there's not a dependency. So it happens automatically. You don't have to set anything up, it's automatic. And that's just, we designed that because we, we felt like people don't want to set dependencies up on every task for that reason. And it better keeps your team in the loop on when they can begin their work or when people are finishing work, which is really great. It's great. And thank you for saving me on that one. Much appreciated. Uh, and thank you, Michelle. Michelle loves me anyways, or MJ loves me anyways. Uh, and MJ, how dark is it up where you are? I know I ask you that question every single time, and I'm sorry, but it's it's a, it's a stretch to live somewhere where it's dark for that long. I think it's dark here right now. Um, okay, that was way off topic. Okay, custom upload buttons and text. Uh, there is uh, an entire... Um, video on how much I stinking love this, but I'm going to show how to do some magic things. But what I want to talk about first is in my remediation file, I have a remediation project going on right now. And for that remediation file, um, we are doing three years of back work. I created folders because I still am trying to figure out how to do these remediation files. It is not fully set up in financial sense yet. I'm picking off the hardest one to tell you guys what some of the great features are because remediation, as I mentioned, is just a disaster to do. So I still have um, Google Drive folders that my client shared with me. So she shared them with me. I had her create a whole system of folders for her to upload her bank statements in. And then in financial sense, I am sending out the requests and every request has a custom link. So for example, for 2020, the upload button would say, please upload 2020 checking, state, checking statements here. And then the link is customized that it actually takes her directly to the folder. Yes, she created the folder and shared it with me. I need this to be super easy for my clients to do, though. I need to send them a list and then have them seamlessly be able to get somewhere. So someone's asking what I mean by a remediation. Yeah, so it's a cleanup. So I don't, because I, a uh, uh, catching up file, I strictly call a catching up file. A remediation file is one that needs cleaning up. So I should use clearer words like cleaning up. So a cleanup file is what we're after here. So what, what I've done uh, in that file um, is 
and I'm just going to show you how it will work. You are in the client task and we're going to create a task and we're going to be really creative and we're going to call it test. And then um, the other thing that I have done is I have created oh, and I need to bump out so we don't show that client list again. I have created a SOP and client task list. And in that I have put the notes and in those notes are some SOPs for us. This is not our whole, if, whatever you wanna call it, SOP or wiki, but in here are notes on things that we need right in financial sense. And what I've done is I've created a template for our buttons. So we have our button display text and then we have what we're gonna do with it. Then we can simply take the button display text, we can copy it and let's just, let's just use that. I, and we've got uh, a description area in there is usually where I say, check your list off. And then we can customize the upload destination. So I've kept a wiki of all of the destinations in the notes. And then I can copy it in and I don't have to go looking for it. So now uh, let's just put anything in. We're going to save it. Um, and then you can um, add all kinds of notes on what it is that you do. And so now um, I've got a place and the client is going to go directly to where I want them to go because all they have to do is click on the button and it takes them where. Um, and then the other thing that I really wanted was disabling um, client uploads. So you can simply disable the client uploads so all they get is a task to check off and they don't get confused about trying to upload something. You can add attachments and then of course you can delete the tasks and then i'm not going to go into the whole manage notifications i really mm -hmm. just wanted to talk about this being an important thing and so while i'm in there um i while i am in here i also want to show you notes is coming up anyways so let's just go with that notes are searchable um so this is a killer i have a client they have dozens of uh, vendor notes that we need. So all these little nuances, some of them have rules, some of them don't have rules, some of them have splits, there is all kinds of things. They're, they're, they have an insurance company that they've got four different kinds of insurance coming in. They have three different um, accounts with Shaw, for example, which is a telephone company up here. We need to keep track of all of those notes because one of the Shaw accounts goes to a different chart of accounts than another one. So when the receipt comes into DEX, we need to be able to code it properly. And then I have notes like don't even look at the bank feed until you have coded this over here. And then other notes would say, make sure you are matching up in the bank feed first because it's in US funds and we're Canadians. So all kinds of notes can go in here and every single one of them is searchable. That changed my game because I had notes in spreadsheets for clients, which is not searchable. So this was a fantastic feature that I love. Um, oh, okay, good. Somebody got to what a wiki is for me. Again, I'm just using random language here. Uh, click all of the task closes a project. We talked about this briefly. Uh, um, I want to highlight something. All right, you go ahead, but I want to highlight something on this. Okay. There we go. We're closed. That is fabulous, especially for something like manager file review, where you don't need to come in, click off a few things, and then come back to the project a week later. Um, that's where I really see the use case scenario. Um, mm -hmm. We do a weekly roll through of our client files. That's another case. We don't come back to it. Monthly close, please don't use this. Check off work as you're doing it, super important. Um, but this is magic. Okay, go ahead, Sharam, sorry. Yeah, so one thing I wanted to add with this, so this was another one of those things where like we wanna reduce admin time. And also we just found that some team members would complete the tasks and they wouldn't close the project. It would just clutter up the dashboard. 
So we added this automation that when all the tasks in a project are completed, it closes the project, right? And it goes into closed, completed. However, not everyone likes this. Some people want to manually close it or they want to keep it open because even though it's completed, they're still waiting on something. So you can turn this automation off as well as some other automations that we have by going to settings and then company um, and you'll be able to do that. So some people love this. Some people it doesn't work with their workflow. So you can tailor it to fit your process. And this includes other automations. Like if you close a task, it marks all subtasks completed. If you mark all subtasks completed, it marks a task completed. Um, if you close a project, it marks all tasks completed. And if you request information, it applies a tag automatically that's it's waiting on client info. So there's some other automations that you can control too. If so, if it doesn't fit your process, you can fit it to your process. Okay, perfect. Um, while we're on notifications, so I think I'm going out of order here, but this is really important and I want to cover this before we run out of time. Um, so uh, in settings, I manage my notifications mightily. I only want to know about this. Um, these are the things that are going to email to me. And um, sometimes I turn off all notifications. When I am actually deeply working in files, I turn off all of the notifications and my day is spent in financial sense. When I'm traveling though, so I was traveling in October, it was during our sales tax close period. And I really wanted to have a handle on where we were at with my clients. Marissa was doing the work. So I turned on specific notifications so that I would know when my client's HST was done, when the payroll was done, all of the things that are deadline driven, whereas month end close for us is somewhere, it's around the 10th of the month that we're closing our client files. So I don't need to know that in the moment, but I really need to know what's happening with something that is, is, is um, compliance driven deadlines. So I turned that back on. I had uh, a remediation file that I was working on last year. It was taking a long time to get the stuff from the client. I turned on notifications when the client did something because I actually was going to come in and, and work on it. It was such a priority to get this work done that I did want to be email notified and have a second way of finding out. I love coming in here though. This is basically where I deal with notifications. I don't deal with them in my email. And then these are all of the things that you can can do in your settings. I'm not going to go into settings today, but please spend some time in settings and get things working the way that you want them to work. One of the things, well, there's so many things I love about Financial Sense, but I love how simple Financial Sense is, but how many features it has. It, it is feature rich, but it's simple. And part of the reason it's simple is because we can customize it the way that we want to. And one of the ways we can customize it is also in that client dashboard where you can customize your views. This is not a new new thing, so I'm not going to go into depth. But Sharam, I did ask if you could show that, right? Because I can't yep. show my customer dashboard. Yeah, let me pull it up. So this is really cool. Um, let me share. I'm going to stop screen. my share and let you start. Let's, let me see if I can get the right one. Okay. So... As you can see here, um, this is the new client pro, uh, client dashboard. So before we had some metrics here, but we had a lot of people that really just wanted like a client database. Um, and inside Financial Sense, if you go into a client's profile, you know, Kelly's talked about the meeting notes and contact information and all this information that you can st store here. But we have this thing in the about section, which is your custom fields. You can create any type of, data point right or in type of information you want to track here so people put like you know where the referral they came from like where they they got the new product, uh, customer the entity type um uh maybe you can put you can put links to other apps in here um you know you can put the formation date like any type of business you can easily create custom fields i've got a bunch of them here but you can create them by hitting manage then when you create them and you drag them in the order that you want you can also display them on your client dashboard. So if we go back to the dashboard here, I can choose which ones of these I want to view here. So by clicking this 
customized dashboard icon, this gear icon here. You can choose which ones you want, um, and they'll be in the same order of they are on the about field. So, which is great because now you get like a client database, right? You can see all your clients. You can see their entity types, formation dates, where they came from, phone numbers, contact information, and you can search by all that. So like maybe um, I want to see all my clients that I got word of mouth, right? Boom. I type that in. It's right there. Or maybe I want to see all my clients that are, you know, are um, LLCs. Oops. Right, I can filter that. So it gives you that visibility and or lets you see they group your clients, view your clients in a more detailed way. Anything you want to add to that, Kelly? A hundred percent I have things to add. I lost my mind when I saw this. Uh, I actually normally uh Sharam and I slack, but I think called you on this. I think I like yeah, just <laughs> randomly phoned him and I said, I'm losing my mind over here. Because I was already using custom fields. Here's how I use custom fields versus notes. Custom fields are the things we need to know about the same information we need to know about every client. So EIN, uh, year end, uh, um, what do you call it? Main folder link, possibly. Um, what else do I have in there? Oh, here in Canada, HST schedule, business number obviously contact information that's going to drop in anyways who files the hst um which is a sales tax um so uh, all the things you need to know the same information across all clients goes into the custom fields and then the notes are anything that relates only to that client and then somebody saw in here so they're getting ahead of me a little bit and that is in that custom view uh can you import things from a spreadsheet? Yes. So if you want to get the information in across all clients there, you can down see the little download button on the far, the little cloud on the far right-hand side of Sharon's screen. You can download that. Then you have a template for upload. Take that template and you can mass put in whatever information you want for a group of clients. This is great, again, for importing information. So if you are new to Financial Sense, set up those custom fields, download that template, uh, like do a test client and fake fill it, download mm -hmm. that template, and then now you've got something to upload with. It's great for bringing them in the first time. It's great for bringing clients in one at a time. Because if you bring them in one at a time, you can bring all that information in and it's done for you. You don't have to peck it out every time or copy and paste. It's just already set imports and so this was a game changer for me i lost my furry little mind i was so excited <laughs> it uh, is i think a lot of people really love this feature and uh, one thing i want to mention too which was a big one i think is if you assign your clients to certain team members you can now filter by that too which yeah. is a big deal for a lot of the firms play in here uh one of the groups i have is uh monthly bookkeeping clients um, versus what I also have by groups, I do related entities. So I do incorporated clients that generally have multi-entity. So in there, uh, I can group by entity, all kinds of things. This, this is amazing. This is like taking the world's best spreadsheet and then making it sortable and searchable and filterable and all things. Mm -hmm. So that, that was great. Uh, okay. Uh, I just want to add like the reason we've done this and like with this client dashboard and like even like the client or well, the client dashboard, you have the client information, but the client database is we believe like it's not just knowing what to do, like with the streamlining your processes and connecting that. It's having all that information to do. So we feel like for your firm to be truly productive, you need to have the checklist to follow and the communication, but you also need to have all that client information in one place instead of in some documents somewhere or some spreadsheet or on one note where people don't know where it is. I can't find it when they need it. So that's kind of keeping you organized so you can get the, the data you need to get your work done. 100%, I was squealing. When I opened it up one morning and I saw this, I was I was literally squealing like a mm -hmm. little, little school girl. Um, so somebody asked, is there a template upload? Yes, so uh, do one test client, download that client, and that CSV file creates for you mm -hmm. the um, the template that you can then move the information around in. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna take over and share again. 
So I have a couple of questions and hi, Jesse. Uh, nice. So Jesse has a question in here and I saw Jesse on Tuesday. Hi, Jesse. Uh, the best way to segregate or filter clients by individual organization. So yes, uh, you've used client groups. I would say client groups for that, Jesse. Yeah. I would say client groups are probably the best way to do that. Um, and then if you want, you could segregate them even further into client groups that may create something like um, if it's married couples, I've seen people doing that. If there's going to be two people involved in a tax return that's related. So that would be it. Um, so anonymous attendee, can I get a copy of the spreadsheet, the remediation file? Uh, sorry, I sell it. So you have to contact me for it. Um, okay. Duplicate folder structure. Uh, but you can now create a folder. So I'm going to jump back into my test client and you can now create a folder system. And then once you have created that folder system, you can duplicate that folder. You can then duplicate that folder structure across many or one client. Custom fields we already talked about and searchable notes. Um, I already talked about notifications, group notifications, Sharon, uh, we don't have much time, but do you want to just talk to why you decided on group notifications? I love it. Yeah, I think just sim simple short people were being overloaded with the amount of notifications they were getting from our system and it was causing them to not look at their notifications. So what we decided to do was actually group them. So if like a client uploads five documents all at once, you'll just get one notification that says your client uploaded several documents instead of five individual notifications about that single project. Same thing if like someone assigns you 10 tasks in the same project, it'll just be like your team member assigned you multiple tasks in this project. So it just makes that a lot better. Uh, so you don't have a million notifications going on and it's more digestible. Um, one thing I want to touch, someone mentioned some of the documents. So with the duplication of documents, that's an awesome new feature. We're going to be adding a lot of new updates around that. So like, for example, if you create a client, it will automatically apply a documents structure that you designed or being able to copy all the document structures all at once to different clients. We plan to build more around that. So you could potentially replace, yeah, your Google drives or, or shared drives. Um, okay, great. So my, so Laurel is wondering about pricing. We will talk about that afterwards. It is on your website. Mm -hmm. How do you get the client custom view versus the dashboard? How do you get the client custom fields view versus the dashboard? Oh, um, I can't really show you that. Yeah, right. Yeah. You're asking a uh, workflow dashboard versus client dashboard. Sharam, can you queue up to show that while I answer a couple of other questions? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and Jesse did answer that question. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, monthly fee per users. Can we speak to the security given the new FTC requirement? Um, Sharam, maybe you can do that at the end. Can yeah. you customize client info so certain info is only viewable to certain team members? No, it's across a client, isn't it? Either they have access right. to a client or they don't. Right. It's either they have access to a client or they don't. You can choose what clients they can see, but you can't customize what certain things in that client they can see. Okay. That's what I thought too. Can you move tasks between projects? Um, tasks between... Yes. Wait, oh, between prod, you can move the tasks around in projects and change the order, but you can't move a task to another project, if that makes sense. Right. You have to recreate that task in that other project. You can't like copy it to an, a different project. Right. Okay. Uh, so we can like comments now. Uh, let me just go back into a, a project into my text. So we are in here, uh, we're going to go into here and then um, I'm not doing a very good job of this because I'm trying to do it in my test client, but let's type in a, let's type in any note. And then can I actually like my own note would be a good question. No, I can't like my own note, but right here I could like a note. So especially when you're in a prod, is it? and I'm in a project, 
It's in a project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a project. Yeah, in a project, which I closed by mistake. So let's just go in here and let's say that I have a comment. So um, I made a comment, then Marissa could simply like it. And I, I, I like, I love, okay, oh, there. So I can like it. That basically says I've acknowledged it. I don't have to type anything out. I am bugging um, Sharam, and now I'm just going to call him out totally on it. I am bugging Sharam <laughs> because I really, I really want like unicorns and gold stars. So when my client finishes a task, this is not a feature. This is just me making a public announcement of something that I want. So, oh, I like that. I like using the like button. I know you got to like the like button. <laughs> so, um, it's super efficient. But um, I want when a client finishes a task, the option, I know this isn't for everybody, but I would love if my clients got something done that like a little gold star could pop up or a little unicorn runs across. I'm just saying, I love when I say, can you just build me that? Like, it's no big deal to code in some sort of unicorn running around. But um, anyways, uh, there we go. Uh, that I shouldn't have gone down that road, right? I, I'm just curious. Drop it in the chat if you'd like that. Um, I know I've heard it a few times. And do people like it when there's like some sort of animation? Like, even if you completed a, a project, like maybe your first five, something appears across the screen and it just, I don't know, it makes you feel better. Um, I'd be curious. Okay, so it's going in. Yes, animations would be fun. It's exactly from Asana. And so many people love Financial Sense if they've been using Asana. I see the two big ones that come over that are just like, where's this been? They come from Asana and Trello into Financial Sense. And Asana has unicorns. So just saying, small reward, animation is fun. Um, also, I am with somebody said uh, on the like buttons, and I call this give me a feature inch and I'll take a mile. On the like buttons, <laughs> I am loving the like buttons. I would also like multiple emojis though. I'd like to do thumbs down. I'd like to do a happy face. I'd like to do like a celebration thing. I'd like a whole bunch of emojis in there, which really I could do by replying and then using the emojis off my keyboard. I realized I could do that. So that is another alternative is that you could actually, you know, in the reply, you, 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 you could, I have an emoji on my keyboard, so I, I could do it. I love when my app partners just make things easy for me though. So um, alternate emojis would be one next level to using emojis off my keyboard. Uh, we're running over time. That's my specialty. Number one, please don't overthink using the financial sense features. Don't get lost in all the features, implement the ones that are really, really gonna matter to you or that you have the time and emotional bandwidth for, and then worry about all the other things. Some things are no brainers to implement. That like button, we don't need to worry about implementing it. That's a feature that's just working for us. If you don't have time right now to set up a folder structure, just know that that folder structure is there. You don't need to set up a feature just because it came into play if it's going to overwhelm you. And this is the one thing that I see people doing way too often. They're like, oh, it's got way too many features. I'm never going to get them all done. Don't do them all. Do the ones that really matter. If I had to pick one, it would be those custom fields because of the new view. That's a beauty. Download the template, implement that. Now some of the load has been taken off and putting um, uh, maybe some workflows you have not been getting in there because you can upload all those tasks at once. Um, so please don't overthink just because there's new features, you've got to roll them all right now. Roll them out as you feel that you can. Uh, so of course we have to have our call to action. I hope you all have, Kelly is a human emoji. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Arlene, such a good point, right? You get overwhelmed and then you get immobilized. There is nothing we can't reverse in here. So uh, it took, uh, like you put a list in and then you don't love that list, okay? You can recreate a list. You can, you can change the list. You can add dependencies in later. You can take dependencies out. So yeah, just get some stuff done. But the, oh shoot, I was going somewhere with that too. 
not overthinking it. Analysis paralysis. Just start analysis playing. paralysis. Yeah, for sure. Um, the folder system. If you don't have bandwidth for it right now, although I implemented it in the space of five minutes, I put in those folders and then I put them across clients. Yeah. Um, well, oh, the custom upload buttons. Those ones have been, they were easy to implement as well. Just make a list of your button text and the links you want clients to go to. I'll tell you the one that I love. I have a, we do weekly bookkeeping on Monday mornings and it goes out at seven o'clock CST because I did ashram. A notification goes out to my clients asking them to please update their QBO bank feeds and fix, fix any connections that are broken. And then there is actually a link on the button that says, we're going to make it easy for you. Here's how you get to QuickBooks Online. They can push that button and get right into QuickBooks Online. There is no friction. And then they're like, oh, now I got to open QuickBooks Online. No, this opens it for them. All they got to do is put their password in. They don't mm -hmm. actually have to now go. Where is my QBO login? Little things like that. Okay, so we're at the end run here. Um, I Oh, that's where I was going with it. Shram and I put in some call to actions. Don't forget to do call to actions with your clients too. That's what the client things, that's how I think of the client communications in financial sense. They're, they're call to actions to get your clients to do something. And um, always have a call to action in your emails as well. What do you want somebody to do? Anyways, the marketing lesson is over there. Uh, go ahead, Sharam. I was going to say, Kelly, the template people were talking about that you shared, is that part of this, these pre-built FC templates? Uh, yes, it is not. It, you have to contact me directly mm -hmm. or because I am just finished tweaking it this week. So, okay. but yes, uh, the it is a template that I am going to have for sale once I manage to get it up on my website. It's easy to build. Well, this one was a beast to build. It's getting it up on my website so the process is automated. That's a little tough. Okay, so there we go. Uh, over time, but I can stay for. Uh, oh, thank you, Beverly. That's very nice for your shout out, and I appreciate you buying them. I have a few minutes for questions, or uh, we can release everybody, right? Yeah. I mean, if people have questions, you can drop them in. If not, I mean, I think we're good to go. This has been a great webinar. Oh, okay. What is my website? So actually in the slide deck, it is there. But if you go to comwaters.ca, um, I have, I know Sharam has lots of free ones in his um, template library in financial sense. I also have specific to financial sense templates it, that I sell. But, and um, can, the, can those be uploaded? I think someone was asking if they could actually upload those templates. Directly uploaded into financial sense. They, you, you click a link and uh, you can actually directly upload these pre-built templates into financial sense. Yeah, actually, I guess I could show that, right? Yeah. Um, and if, for some reason, like it's an Excel file and you can't, you can always copy and paste it. <laughs> Now you can put it in all at once. You just put in that whole thing and it goes boom, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. There is a way to import templates uh, if they are an FC file, not if they're an Excel file. But um, file. if you've built them that way. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's as simple as this. Add a template and then it will, no, share templates. It's yeah, right here. Like, oh, Kelly's being a dark. Share templates. You report. can import them and they will import directly. Um, okay. Okay. How long is the discount good for? Pretty much forever because we do meetups. We're trying to do meetups every month. Uh, uh, any other questions? Mm -hmm. So somebody wants to know about the pre-built templates that you have in Financial Sense. And anybody that needs to go, obviously, um, you're, you're free to leave. And thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody for coming. Sorry about the uh, glitches right at the beginning there with the uh, internet. Um, Sharam, do you want, to, I can stop and share and you can do a demo of those um, well, I was gonna say I was just gonna let, if you contact me because I'll have to get those templates. So it sounds like, um, is it, who was it, Eden? If you send me, I'm gonna drop my email in again. If you don't already have it, send me an email and I can get those templates. Uh, just email me and then I'll send them over to you so you can re-upload them and have the default templates again. 
Um, and Kim, you were asking about that remediation file. You can email me. That one is not on my website yet. Uh, I put my email in there. Oh, and I did it wrong. I can't even do my, my stream deck died yesterday as well. Uh, normally I can just hit a button and it puts it in. I love my stream deck. My stream deck didn't die actually. My computer started glitching and it, I need to reinstall stream deck. Uh, yes, okay, so Conrad, right back to the very beginning, right? The number one takeaway is you can build stuff in spreadsheets and upload them now. I agree, that is a game changer. I'm with you. We're accountants and bookkeepers. We think in spreadsheets. Yeah. I just like, to, yep. Uh, under the clients in FC, can we export in batch, update the client info, and then re-import them into FC? You cannot. Mm -mm. If you do that, it'll. I believe it will just create a different contact under the client profile. I, just making sure I've got all the questions here. Uh, email address and asking for the slide deck again. I'll put the slide deck in one more time. And we'll send a follow-up email as well with the recording in the deck. Uh, I'm going to put it in one last time here though there it is and uh i think i think we're good to go okay and uh, thanks everybody for coming uh i appreciate it i know there's uh lots of options for webinars and all that kind of stuff right now so everybody who came today thank you thank you i'm gonna end the i'm i think i have the power to end the webinar yeah you're the host now see everyone